But let's see if Rashford can put this in. It looks decent. It looks decent from Marcus. That is stunning from Rashford. 1-0 up against Wolves. I've scored my first free kick of this series. Dan James here with a big chance. Sliding this one past the keeper. It's sensational from the Welshman. In this second half, we've completely murdered Spurs. Literally that. So here we are back again with another episode of the Man United career mode series on next gen FIFA and we've got a big episode coming up. We're halfway through December already which means by the end of this episode we should be in the January transfer window and you guys know we've got business to do since we sold Paul Pogba to PSG. We need a midfielder to replace his talent and ability and we do have the cash to make that happen. And in this episode, we may get that done. And not just that, guys. We've got potentially a defender to sign to improve our defense. Possibly even a camp to give us some more depth. That is a lot of business that we need to start doing in this episode. Of course, keep your transfer suggestions coming. If you guys are enjoying this Man United career mode series, I would really appreciate if you could drop a like on the video. That helps the channel grow. Subscribe if you are new around here. And well, let's kick things off. Press conference to kick off the episode. Drop in your questions in the comment section below. First one of the day, sign Dominic. Now, I don't want to butcher this guy's name, so I don't know how to pronounce it. Let me know in the comments section if any of you guys watching this video are from Hungary. But anyways, I would really appreciate uh, the help with pronouncing this guy's name. But he looks like a top talent. I've seen him play in the CL a few times and he looks unreal. But the problem here is he has just signed for AC Milan. And I'm not sure after six months if you're allowed to sign transferred players or not. We'll have to wait and see, but he is certainly an option, along with Jack Grealish. But again, same situation with Grealish, who has recently joined Roma. So we're going to have to wait and see what's going to happen with that backup camp position, which I definitely want to improve upon. But Dominic is certainly an option there. We'll see. And he's a free kick specialist as well. So that's interesting. Up next, after selling Cavani next season, position change Mason Greenwood and have him play as a backup striker. Now, last episode, we discussed the possibility of Cavani's departure. And I think we concluded that, yes, he's going to leave come end of season. I don't want to renew his contract. He's going to give us one good season, but that's it. He can move on to his next chapter in his career. And we're going to focus on either youngsters or bringing in a superstar. And you guys are right. We could easily have Anthony Martial be our main man up top. And have Mason Greenwood be back up to him. That just works guys. That absolutely works. We might try and convert him to a striker. But for now, the only thing I want Mason Greenwood to do is get back to, you know, top form. That injury has really set him back. In fact, he's one of the only players to go down in his overall. So... This season for Greenwood is all about, you know, getting back that mojo and let's hope he can do so. Next season, making him a striker could definitely be the play with us already having Oyarzabal and Dan James for that right mid position. Next up, how did PSG make it through the Champions League? Because Basak Sahir had a better goal difference. Yep, that's true. Basak Sahir did have a better goal difference than PSG. But the Champions League is decided on head-to-head -head records if there's a tie. So... I'm pretty sure PSG got better results against Pasak Sahid. Away, they got a two-all draw. And at home, they managed to beat them 1-0, which puts them at aggregate 3-2 in the group stages. So that's why they qualified in second spot. Now, the draw for the round of 16 has been made, but I'm going to make you guys wait. It's an unbelievable draw we've received, that much I know. And I'll let you know when we're in February getting ready to play that particular team. So... Yeah, Champions League will resume then. For now, we focus on transfers in the Prem. Press conference adapter up. Let's kick on. Hat-trick hero in the last episode. What a performance from Anthony Martial. I mean, he's been unreal for us. 16 goals in 19 games and he picks up another plate of the episode award. Okay, now today's episode's challenge is certainly an interesting one. The Ole way. I'm going to call it super subs. Uh, create two goals with substitute, score or assist. If not, you're not allowed to sub anyone in for the next two games. Okay, we basically need a couple of goal contributions in today's episode with substitutes. That shouldn't be that difficult. Two, I can definitely do two, but we'll see, we'll see. This should be an easy one, but if we fail to do so, no subs in our next two games in the next episode... That could be brutal. We won't discuss transfers for now because we still have a few Premier League games to get through before the window opens. So for now, we keep our focus on the Prem as we take on Arsenal away at the Emirates. This is a fixture I'd love to win. They're 7th in the league with 9 points above them. Let's beat them and keep our spot 
at the top of the table intact because Liverpool and Leicester are definitely chasing us. Man City are gaining as well but right now they're 12 points behind. I cannot believe how bad City have been this season. We're slowly trying to get used to life after Paul Pogba because by the end of this episode he'll be gone to PSG so we better get used to that. So this is how I've got my team set up against Arsenal. I'm giving Maguire a go. We'll see how he plays in this one. Upampecano starts. Fred is in midfield. Bruno. Martial. We've got Rashford. Oyarzabal. A strong United team. Arsenal playing a five at the back. That just frustrates me. But we've got the better team here. And I think we should be winning this. But at the Emirates. Away. You never know. We know how bad Arsenal have been in real life. In this series they've been a bit better. So this game could go either way. Look at that Arsenal. Thierry Henry Tifo in the background. Looks absolutely fantastic. Here we are at the Emirates. A big game, guys. A massive game in the Premier League. We win here and we extend our lead at the top, which is something I absolutely want to do. And let's go for it. Arsenal already on the attack. We can't let them take the lead because if we do, you guys know how difficult it is to score against five of the back team. So giving them the lead is just not an option, guys. Arsenal playing some neat football. Alex Telles should get that. Art as well. Alex Telles, brilliant. Mikel Oyarzabal has dropped really deep. That's one thing I've noticed with Oyarzabal, and I'm sure you guys have as well. He drops really deep, kind of like Messi. But of course, he's so energetic that he's able to get back up the field really quickly. As now he might be able to whip in a cross for Anthony Martial. That has to be miss of the season, guys. That has to be miss of the season. The work Mikel Oyarzabal did there to bring up the ball forward and create that chance, all gone undone because of that miss. Unreal how... Marshall has managed to miss that. Still nil-nil, but we really should be 1-0 up with that. Alex Teres sees Anthony Martial. Cleverly done to find Bruno. Can this be a goal? And finally, we do score. Arsenal getting completely exposed at the back there with Man United taking the lead. It's 1-0 against Arsenal. That, that was a fantastic finish from Bruno Fernandes. On his left foot as well, but he slotted it home easily. Take a look at that. Martial with a lovely back heel after the drag back to open up space. Bruno just side-footed at home with his left foot. Bang, we get the goal, we get the lead, deservedly so. Arsenal look pretty terrible, guys, and let's take advantage of it. That's nice. Looking for Mikel Oyarzabal, difficult angle, tries to slot it home, rebound for Fred. He's missed that. That's another big miss. The misses we're going through right now. Martial missed the sitter, and now Fred is well. If he put that on target, it was a simple goal, but... Huh, these missed chances hopefully won't come back to haunt us. Oh, it's Iñaki Williams up front for Arsenal. They've got pace and they can use it against us because Maguire isn't the quickest. But so far, we haven't given Arsenal the opportunity to get in behind. But now we've done. Iñaki Williams on the ball, brings it inside. Looks for Martinelli. That's good defending from Upamecano. Lovely block, but it's fallen right back to Tellez. Williams again, looks inside for Ceballos, finds Martinelli. That's good football from Arsenal. You don't take your chances, you will get punished. This is legit the perfect example. Martinelli scores and does that stupid boxing celebration in front of the camera. We got to respond here. I think we're the, we're the much better team. This has to be three points for Man United. No, no questions. Half time and 1 1. I feel like that is an unfair representation of the game. We've been much better than a 1 1, but that's how football is. Second half, we need to make changes. In fact, I'm definitely going to make substitutions. We anyway need to complete an objective. So. I'm thinking I bring on uh, Edinson Cavani, he's a goal scorer, will definitely help out. Also Pogba for Fred is what I'm going to do. Let's hope we can see some goal contributions from them. This is a game I think we have to win. Thomas Partey looks for Willian, no way are we letting Willian score against us. Upamecano with quite possibly the best defensive moment of this series. He's just coming flying out of nowhere to block that, that was 100% going in the back of the net. Incredible, so far it's 1-1 because of Upamecano. Where have Arsenal found this much space? It's Nicola Pepe in behind here. This is problems. This is problems. Ceballos looking for the drag back finds. Iñaki Williams big save from De Gea. He may have just saved us a point there. Man this has been difficult. I expected Arsenal to be pretty weak but they've given us a big fight and looks like we're gonna drop points here if we are unable to score. In fact it's Arsenal looking more likely to score another goal as De Gea makes another big save. One of the worst second half performances I think we've had in this series. We just couldn't do anything. And at the Emirates, we have dropped points. Not a bad result as such, but yeah, it was a difficult game. And I think I expected a bit more. 
First 30 minutes, we should have made it 2-0 or even 3-0. That we didn't do and that cost us. Okay, what is going on with fixtures in this episode? We're up against Leicester City next to our third in the Premier League. And guess what? After that, we've soon got Liverpool who are top of the league. So, yeah, big fixtures before we can get into all transfers and all. Right now, the focus is on the Prem to remain as high as possible. Already, Liverpool have overtaken us. This next game against Leicester is going to be huge. Leicester City playing a 5 at the back. I didn't expect them to do so, but oh well, it is what it is, I suppose. They've got a good team all round. NDD, a player, possibly we could bring in. I don't know. I'm just saying it could happen. You never know. But anyways, looking at our team, Pogba's back in the team. I think I want to start Lindelof. I just need that extra pace at the back. But apart from that, that is what I'm running with. Let's go out there and get back to winning ways in the Prem. This is second versus third in the Premier League. Oh, yeah, it's about should be through here. And I see Martial making a good run. This needs to be 1-0. That is calm and composed from Anthony Martial. Just what we need up top. And Mikel Oyarzabal with a lovely, um, what do you call it, a through ball? Was that even a through ball? I think so. I think I just pressed the triangle button and it worked out perfectly. Not the triangle, the Y button on the Xbox. Anyways, 1-0 up against Leicester. But remember, against Arsenal, we went 1-0 up, but we still couldn't get the result. So we've got to still be focused. We need three points here against Leicester because soon we've got Liverpool. And in that game, anything could happen. So we're not taking a chance. This has to be a win. It is definitely a bit worrying that I rely on Paul Pogba so much when he's about to leave in just a few weeks, man. Replacing him is just not going to be easy because in this series, Pogba has been nothing but incredible for me. So it's going to be a tough task. Whoever comes in will need to be up to the mark. To help complete our objective for the second half, I'm going to make a couple of changes. Dan James for Oyarzabal and Edinson Cavani for Martial. Bringing them two on, I think it's going to help us get goal contributions. We still need two. Otherwise, next episode, we can't make subs. So, yeah, trying to complete that objective in this game as well. Dembele looking in behind for Harvey Barnes. Uh, this is tough. This is tough. Dan James. What? Oh, he's giving away a pen. That's literally the worst start for a substitute ever. Four minutes in, he went sliding in and has given a pen. You know what's the funny thing? I didn't even slide with Dan James. I wasn't controlling him. He's done that all on his own. Let's take a look and see what actually happened here. Went sliding in. Contact. Pen. Fair enough. Fair freaking enough. Moussa Dembele to take this. If De Gea can save this, it'll be incredible. But it's literally top left corner. Leicester have equalized. And things are not going well. Similar case to the Arsenal game. Are we actually going to drop points again? Let's hope not. Bruno now looking for Edinson Cavani. Big moment in the game for us. Here's Cavani 1v1. He doesn't miss those kind of chances. Edinson Cavani scores. And let's go. Man United have the lead against Leicester City. A big goal for Cavani. I don't know why his celebration has defaulted to this. I much prefer the other celebration that he has. But good thing he scored because that helps us with the objective. A bit of progress. One goal with a substitute. We just need one more. Come on. Now Marcus Rashford here. Good play from Rashford. Bruno. In behind for Marcus Rashford. This is brilliant. This is really brilliant. Rashford in a good spot. Going for the finesse shot. Cavani with the header. Bang. But he's offside. Ah. That would have been 3-1 and our objective complete. But the ref had to ruin it all. Huh, look at the fans behind the ref. They're just losing their minds. Zinchenko as he looks to whip it in. Alex Telles holding off his man. He just about does. Referee blow the whistle. Now I've given it away in the box. No, no, no. We're not conceding in the 95th minute of the game. This guy's just walking it away. I'm just going sliding in. And I think the ref's blown the whistle. My God, was that stressful. But we're over the line at the end. Manchester United make it 2-1 over Leicester. Big win for us, guys. Big win over Brendan Rodgers' Leicester. Next up, it's Brighton for us in the Premier League. We're in the month of December. It's, it's the winter madness in the Premier League. So fitness levels on both sides were super low. Use my second team. Good to still pick up a 2-0 win. Bruno and I think Cavani scored the goals for us. First versus second in the Premier League up next. That old Trafford is Manchester United take on Liverpool. This is huge. We win this game. We reduce or actually increase the gap of two points over Liverpool. But if they win... They go four points up the top, so stakes are high. It's a big game, a big, big rivalry as well. This is huge. This is what Liverpool versus Man United should be all about. And now in this series, it is. Somehow, we find ourselves fighting for the title with teams like City not delivering this season. And let's take advantage of it. You never know. We need a result here against Liverpool. 
we can't let them win, that's for sure. Van der Beek is struggling with stamina since we did play him against, of course, Brighton. And because of that, McTominay starts in this setup. I mean, in a game like this, where the tensions are going to be so high, I think you'd want Scott McTominay on the pitch, and that's why he's there. At the back, I just trust Lindelof more. He starts over Maguire, but apart from that, pretty much our standard first 11. Looking at Liverpool, they're not making too many changes either. They've got Sabitza in midfield, but it's that trio of Salah, Firmino and Mane that scares me. This is going to be one hell of a game. Oh man, I am ready for this. I mean... Yeah, this is it, guys. This is it. Liverpool, Man United fighting both for the Prem. This is mental. Mental scenes, boys, as the players are walking out from the team bus. We're at Old Trafford, and this is probably our biggest game of the season so far. Liverpool already in behind. This could be a disastrous start for us as De Gea couldn't keep Firmino out. And Liverpool have taken the lead within the first four minutes, man. This is unacceptable from us. We cannot be conceding so early on in games. Ah. Oh. Fair play, that was a phenomenal attack from Liverpool. I mean, they got in behind so easily then and deserve to be in the lead, but we got to respond. At Anfield, we beat Liverpool. If we can do a league double over them, that's the dream. Ah, oh, they've got an in behind again. This time, De Gea does make the save. Liverpool have looked so much better than us. Completely different to the game we had at Anfield where we were so much better than them, but that's Liverpool for you. There's a reason why they top the league right now, but we're no slouch either. Rashford now bringing the ball inside. Still Marcus here. That's that's bad from him. That is really bad from Rashford. Oh, Liverpool, man. They're so frustrating to play against. Sees Martial. I think Van Dijk slipped in the box there. We could take advantage of it. Juan Bissaka looking for the cutback. Joe Gomez read that well. That's our first real danger that we've caused Liverpool, which is good to see. I think we've got a bit of space to work with as Juan Bissaka, he is absolutely rapid. Here he goes, Juan Bissaka could cross it for Mikel Oyarzabal. Simple finish, is he onside though? I think he is. Mikel Oyarzabal manages to stay onside and out of nowhere we've got the equaliser. Again, this man has made a habit of scoring in big games for us and similar goals. He scored, a, you know, um, a first time volley like this. I think a couple of times already for us. Simple finish, puts it in the back of the net. Juan Bissaka grabs an assist. His pace there created that opportunity for us and a nice finish from Oyarzabal as the Spaniard gets us back in this one. Let's go. Half time against Liverpool and uh, I'm happy that we're level with them but our performance could be better. Second half, let's aim for that. I think we need Edinson Cavani up top. This hasn't been Martial's game. I think Cavani's presence would cause Van Dijk and Gomez more problems. He's been in good form off the bench for us. Let's make use of him. Del Salah on the ball, out wide for Sabitza. It's, it's fantastic from Liverpool, you know. When you can see the goal like this, you can't, you can't really do anything else but just accept it and applaud it. Because it was brilliant football from Liverpool. Fermino again, good play, celebrates with Klopp. Liverpool lead 2-1 and we're back to square one yet again. No space to do anything there, so I'm going for Alex Tellez. Rashford inside, Liverpool defending so tight right now. Cavani tries to open up maybe just a little bit of space but can't. We're going backwards for McTominay. Alex Telles, this is so difficult right now. We just cannot get the space to attack and Liverpool win the ball. They've defended so well in this game, which has been really frustrating. But we've won the ball back with Upamecano. Could we do something here now? Bruno looks for Pogba. Scooping this one for Rashford. It's brilliant. Marcus goes for goal, but Joe Gomez with the block. This has been a struggle. Cavani again. Good play to find Paul Pogba, who's taken this one really well. Back to Rashford now, but again, there's just no space. So I go for Alex Telles. Backwards for Rashford. Now Bruno. Can he open up space against, of course, Virgil van Dijk? Of course he can't. That defense of Liverpool has just played like champions there. We've just struggled to get behind. Oh, Cavani's in space. Can I find him? I just about can. How's he not scored that? And Virgil van Dijk clears it away. Cavani with a sitter there. You'd expect him to score that. How did he not? Although another chance here for Pogba. Find space shoots. That's blocked as well. We could have made it 2 all right there. Not much time left. Upamecano going for the long ball approach. Rashford controls it well. Again, as I said, not much time left. Rashford finesse shot. Alisson with a big save. The chance might still be on. Nah, I think it's over. I think it is all over here. But uh, that was a big chance for Rashford at the end. And we've taken a big L here at Old Trafford to Liverpool. At Anfield, we got the job done. But at Old Trafford, they got the job done. A hard-fought victory for Liverpool. Fair play. And that means they're four points above us in the Prem. 
Huh, it's still not over though. The title race is still not over. Four points now is the gap between us and Manchester United. Such a bummer. And also, we failed our objective for the first time in this series. That means next episode, the games that we play, we cannot make a single substitute. Yep, for the first two games actually. So that is not good at all. And I think we've got Tottenham next. Not being able to make subs, that's going to cause us problems. But that's the challenge. We failed and we got to do the forfeit. But... Four points off the top after 21 games, I guess isn't all that bad. But this is it, guys. We're in the month of January now. It's transfer season. Can't wait. Look at all what's happened here. We've sent out a few players out on loan. Pogba has been sold, guys. Yeah, he's gone. We need to find a replacement for him, which we'll be doing soon. Uh, we've got a few players arriving. Rojo leaving the club. Igalo going back to Shanghai because we barely played him. A lot's happened already. But most importantly, we're left with about 170 million. Yeah, 170 million to do business. We need maybe a midfielder, maybe a couple, probably, yeah. A centre-back is on the cards. A lot's going to happen in this window. Keep your suggestions coming in. Right now, as you know, I'm on the hunt for either one of Grealish or this guy. But we just cannot sign them, man. That is so frustrating. Maybe we keep these kind of signings for next season. I don't know. I think that should be the play. Kimmich and Wilfred Ndidi are probably the two players I'm looking at to replace Pogba. But I still haven't made a decision. And you know what? Because of that, I don't want to make the signings in this episode. We'll keep that for the next episode. So I want you guys to let me know in the comments section who should we be going for. Kimmich or Ndidi? It's a big call. Money isn't really that big of a factor because we do have enough in the bank to make those transfers happen. So yeah. And of course, any other player in that position you guys think would help us out let me know but for now i'm looking at those two now before we wrap this one up player of the episode i'm not entirely sure who deserves to get it because it wasn't really a good episode for us upa Mekano, i thought had a decent episode oyar zamal as well Cavani had a very good episode but it's it's a bit of a different one because we drew one game lost one and won one so i'm not sure who deserves player of the episode you guys can let me know but for now guys this is where we're ending things off no transfer business in this episode because I simply cannot decide and both Grealish and Dominic aren't available, so bit of a weird one. But for now, we're ending off the episode. Drop a like if you've enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here, and I'll catch you all next time.